is fixing South Sudan's ideas for building the new nation. Hello and welcome to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adingor. This week on Fixing South Sudan, a comprehensive review of the National Revenue Authority. Will NRA block tax loopholes and increase revenue for South Sudan? Nearly a year since the NRA was established, what has the institution achieved and can NRA fix South Sudan? Joining us in the show is Dr. Olympio Atipo, the Commissioner General, South Sudan Revenue Authority. We are elated to welcome him to the program. Welcome to Fixing South Sudan. Thank you very much. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. How are you too? Very good. The National Revenue Authority is a relatively new institution in the country, born into a hostile environment and has its unique sets of challenges and opportunities. You are nine months in the jobs and what can you say about the institution so far? Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me use this opportunity to thank people of South Sudan and also to thank His Excellency the President, uh, General Savaki Maidi, for taking the bold decision to appoint me as a Commissioner General, also to brought this vision up that we want a sustainable revenue base to be able to promote the development of the country. It's a very, very challenging uh, decision it has taken, and we have a responsibility as a South Sudanese to support the vision of His Excellency the President. What have you come to do, and are you doing it? Yes, we have started very well as National Revenue Authority. This is a new institution completely. It is not that we are taking over, it's a complete new institution. What we are we supposed to do is to talk over all non-air revenue generation in the country as an institution. And it is important for us to understand the conceptualization of the whole idea of building a national revenue authority and the partners involved. And that can give people a clear understanding of the processes we are, or the, we are passing through. This, pro, this is a project. I need to emphasize here. It's a project for the next three years. And this project is being funded by African Development Bank in support of the government of South Sudan. And to implement this project, we have two parties. That is African Development Bank and the government of South Sudan, for that matter, Ministry of Finance. So those are the two parties who are supporting me to uh, make sure that we establish the National Revenue Authority. So they all have a responsibility. So I am just like an engineer who came to site to build. So you're supposed to give me a raw material then I can move on to establish the building. So the building is the National Revenue Authority, which we have been working on so far. Nine months down the line, what have we done so far? One of the key issues we are trying to do is to build a system. And to build this system, there are certain things we need to put in place. And the whole idea is to make sure we protect national revenue. And we make sure that the revenue is generated in a transparent manner and in a very actually accountable. So that the linkages in the system of generation we block. We are not saying we are going to perform magic to stop everything, all the linkages. But as much as possible, we want to do our best to make sure that we block most of the linkages so that the money can be accounted for. So on this the, note... The magic you have to perform is this. South Sudan is over-reliant over on oil revenue. And your task is to generate non-oil revenue. That is the magic you have to perform. Yes. So 
some of the things we are doing to make sure we realize the magic is that we are building a database. And that is going to be the heart of the whole idea of building a national revenue authority. This database is going to connect the, the entire system across the country, where we are going to have a real-time money reporting, where taxpayers pay money. We'll see the money in our office reporting at the same time. Now, what is going to happen is that this database is supposed to link all the revenue generation ministry and then the agency into the National Revenue Authority. And another area is that we are now going to link our database to the bank. The bank will configure, there will be an integration of our database with the commercial bank who will be receiving revenue on our behalf. So that any money which is paid to the commercial bank on daily basis, within five minutes, we're supposed to have a reflection of that money in our system. So we know how much is being paid at any point. So we can generate our own report on daily basis, on quarterly basis. And the database is a whole heart, the center of what we are doing. You are talking about what we are going to do. What have you done in your nine months? We have initiated the procurement process of the companies to start building the database. That is one. It's a huge. And in this donor project, it takes months to do this processing. So we are in advanced stage of hiring a company. Because first, we have to uh, identify what we call the integrated task management system, which we have identified. And then we have now advertised those positions, and we are in the final stage of hiring a company to come and start building the database. That is one. One of the significant things also we've done is that the current taxation act we have has challenges. One, we don't have effective regulation to operationalize the taxation act. So one of the things we have done is to hire an international task a lawyer to come and support the Ministry of Justice to rewrite or to amend the entire taxation out and also give us a, a proper regulation. The lawyer is still working with the stakeholders as we speak right now. And all these things take months to hire. The procurement process takes months. And these are the foundation. We've also, also finalized the recruitment of a HR firm, change management firm, which is coming to support us for recruitment of staff. Because by law, we are going to recruit new workforce. So that process too is in an advanced stage. It's another area that we, we are finished working on. So these are all processes we are going on. Another thing is that we've just finished signing contract with commercial from banks. Steps, from the start, you promised some urgent steps, and we are leading into what you are saying. Mm -hmm. And you said uh, the following, that you want you wanted digital, digitalization of the country's tax payment system, uh, and then scaling down the number of commercial banks mandated to collect taxes on behalf of the government mm -hmm. and increase crackdown on tax defaulters. Mm -hmm. Those were the key priorities. Yes. For you. So digitalization is bringing the, the data management system that we are talking about. So the company is already, we are almost getting to the final stage of hiring the company. So that is the issue of the digitalization. The issue of commercial bank. You know, the commercial bank, they were working under Ministry of Finance. But by virtue of establishment of the National Revenue Authority, we have a new regulation law. So it's not the National Revenue Authority. We have done a lot of uh, scanning of the commercial banks, and we've just signed a contract with the commercial bank. And they are going to work under street rule. Now, what is going to be interesting is that these commercial banks, we are going to have only one single account in the name of National Revenue Authority. And every revenue from the non-oil revenue generation, ministry, department, whatever, is going into that single account. And by law, if you read Section 40 of this ad, the ad is saying that we report on the money on or 15th of the ensuing month. So what it means is that now we are going to collect revenue and report on the revenue in the six weeks. So for the first time, everybody will know how much is generated on monthly basis from the non-oil revenue generation system. And you, that is a very significant thing we are you doing. You had a false start on uh, the selection of the commercial banks First, you zeroed in on a few of them, and that was revoked by the board because it did not, it was not certified or approved by justice department. Why did that happen? No, what, what, what happened now is that it, it is not that it was not uh, certified by the board. We passed through a process. And you know, in this new system... The, the process was questionable. Your selection of some banks was questionable. I am coming to that. Yeah, we, we passed through a process, some bank were selected, and then this was presented to the board. What happened is that there are two things happening here. As a commissioner general, there are certain decisions I can take 
and inform the board. And there are other decisions that I need to inform the board before what? I take them. So these are, decisions, these are matters of law. So it is not about uh, we are doing anything illegal without the knowledge of the board. But the board feel that this is a very critical issue. They, they need to be more involved. Your decision was rejected. It was not that at the end of the day, all the banks selected were part of the bank selected now. So it is just that we need to do the thing, make sure that the board is more involved. And if the board is more involved, they understand what exactly we are doing. You know, there are certain things which are administrative issue. But you cannot say because there are administrative issues that you do it. So now what we did is that to make sure that the board is even more involved in selecting the bank. So this is what happened on the second phase. When there are winners, there are losers, and the losers are saying, why did you pick the winners? No. What was the criterion for selecting some There are the several criteria that we use in selecting the bank. We talk about IT system infrastructure, their current reporting system, because some of the banks already have challenges that we are passing through. And we also talk of the potential of some of the banks giving a certain opportunity across the country is one. Well, how the bank is located. And then we are also looking at uh, outside this country. We also need banks. For example, issues, there are issues in Mubasa and other areas. Who are these banks we can support us to track certain things? So we, there are a lot of criteria we put in place. But look, let me tell you, in these things, there are always issues which will crop up. People will not be happy. People will not be, have opportunity to be part. But this is not the end. This contract is just 12 months. So after 12 months, we will go in for a new selection. And we'll give opportunity to all the banks to also reapply again for new selection. One of the issues that is cropping up is that you are linked to some banks. Is this true or not? <laughs> that is very interesting. You know, when you are uh, embarking on this change, and especially, especially when it comes to issues of revenue, there are all rumors which will be flying around. I am from Ghana. How can I be linked to all the banks? I've been in this country for seven years before taking this job. Come February next year, I'll be eight years in this country. So some of the bank activities in this country are even knowing more better than some South Sudanese. And that is what is creating. I know a lot of information about the bank. So I'm also looking at, I'm also bringing that experience on board. I have not linked to, I don't know any of the banks. Why, why would I know them? These are all banks. Some of them are international, but they are headed by South Sudanese. So how can I have a link with the bank? Are you transparent? You see, I am just transparent, and I believe in the law. At times, people say I am difficult. That is why people may say I am difficult. In make this particular progress, uh, process we are passing through, it's a very challenging process. Because if you want to put measures, make sure the financial management system is put in place, especially revenue, it's a difficult issue. It's so a that's It's a difficult issue, and we are going to take a break from you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Dolco Media Services. We have so many services for you, such as video production, camera hiring, sound system hiring, event management, passport photo, stand-up comedy, printing. Drama, music, dance, multimedia, and photography. Dolco Media Services, our culture, our pride. Welcome back to Fixing South Sudan, your ideas for building the new nation. I am Adin Moore, and with us in the program is Dr. Olympio Atipo, the Commissioner General, South Sudan Revenue Authority. Is NRA a good idea for fixing South Sudan? As a matter of fact, it's the excellent idea. It's more than good. It's a very excellent idea. No, what is happening now is that, as we are all aware, the country is uh, it relies on oil revenue. The national resource envelopes uh, pre uh, post independent early years was 98% of oil revenue. But it is no longer sustainable. If you look at the volatility in the global market, the fluctuation in the prices and everything, it is no longer a reliable source of revenue for the government. And therefore, it is important for us to diversify the revenue sources into non-oil revenue. And all other countries have done this, and they have been successful. And building a national revenue authority to generate non-oil revenue is the only sustainable income base for the country. And this 
there cannot be there will not be any fluctuation whether the oil price is going down or not the fact that the national revenue authority is working hard to generate the, uh, the non oil revenue the country will survive the challenges of setup are enormous and are you confident that if given support you're going to make a difference yes we are already making a difference the step we are taking already people are seeing that there is something which is going to happen yeah in, in that is what i'm telling you that this is a new system we are building it is new to people that is why we need to educate people we need to uh, sensitize people in any change management there is always resistance to change and this resistance come in different form one of them is ascentity the people who are going to be directly affected don't know what is going to happen to them are they going for example the employees of custom and other employees that we have taken over there is this uncertainty over there so we have a responsibility as change managers to educate the people to sensitize them about the impact of the change and what they and then when you come to other institution in the issue of taking over a certain responsibility and revenue responsibility people are agitated so it is just a normal change process so challenges we are facing is just a normal challenges part of why you were brought as a foreigner was so that you are not in touch or in tune with the day-to-day -day politics and your decisions are not affected so when you talk about resistance what is the resistance about and this is why i'm saying that in any change management there is resistance the reason why people will resist is that if people don't know are they resisting because you are a foreigner or are they resisting because they are going to lose positions no they are not resisting because i am a foreigner what i'm trying to say is that if you take the issues of recruitment and employment we have taken over custom directory and then the taxation directory and by law we're supposed to have new workforce it means that and the law say we should apply for everybody every uh, position should be advertised and people apply for it now you have people who are already working and the law say we should advertise the same position for them to apply people need to be worried what is going to happen to them and there will be agitation that is why i say it is not about resistance that we don't want the system to work everybody says that is supporting the system but what we are what i'm saying is that it is a change process because of uncertainty people don't know what is going to happen and that is why we have a responsibility as change managers to educate the people to sensitize them to understand exactly the implication of the change this is a tough thing because some of these people they come from the liberation background some of them are generals they are military people and how do you sort of reach a compromise here? Because for you to do your work, some, some heads have to roll. And at the same time, there are political implications. So it's a tough thing for you. Now, first of all, that we have a political will. We have a support from His Excellency, the President, and most, most people across the board. So we have a political will. This is a decision His Excellency, the President, has taken on behalf of the people of South Sudan. And the people of South Sudan have supported the decision through the parliament that this is the way that we want to go. So this is an issue about South Sudan. It is not about any individual. Of course, this issue about having a generous and others, I am not having challenge with any general. Because this is a civilian institution. And we are educating the people that if you are coming to civilian institution, there is a need for you to undergo certain orientation. Because the way we behave, things we do in the civilian institution is different from the, the military and the security sector. So I'm not having any challenge with uh, any general about the system, how supposed to be, uh, the system supposed to be. Built. But we have to be frank. With political will, what are you going to do? You are talking about an area where corruption is toxic. So with, with uh, this kind of support uh, from the high level, what are you going to do about it? Because to raise revenue for South Sudan means that you have to fight with some people. And do you have the temperament to do it? That is exactly where, what I'm in, I am doing. I have the political will. Are and you going to fight or are you going to be afraid? It is not me who is going to fight. It's the system we are putting in place which is going to fight the people. I am not afraid. I'm not living here. I will be here until the system is fixed. And for that one, everybody has to understand that. And uh, I did not come here by accident. I am here for a reason. So I will make sure that we fulfill the vision of His Excellency, the President. The system we are putting in place is to block the leakages. And it is an anti-corruption mechanism that we are trying to put in place. We are not fighting any individual. Other than the resistance that you are finding, the attitudes also have to change. For, for change to happen, 
And let me bring you uh, results of a study in your own country. In Ghana, in August 2013, they concluded that some avoid paying taxes and fees owed to the state because of the following. That taxes are too high, 25% said that. People cannot afford to pay, uh, 21%. Poor government service delivery, 14%. Wasteful use of tax money by government, 10%. Unfair tax system, 9%. Stealing of tax money by government officials, 4%. And offenders being sure they will not be caught. And to succeed, you need to change attitude among the citizens, but also among government officials. And you talk of putting in place a system for punishing people, which is separate and which is unique to your institution. Yeah. Yeah, all these things, this is exactly what we are doing. We are learning from all this mistake. So we are going to make sure that the things that we have read, the study that we have read, we did not fall into this path. That is why we are putting the system in place. We are working on the task law to make sure that we have a, a very friendly environment for the investor. We'll be looking at the tax rate. We'll be looking at the margin. And that is why we are working on all these things. So we'll be addressing all these things. So the issue is that we are building the system to protect government resources. And the issue of tax avoidance is a very critical issue. At times, people avoid and not necessary because the tax rates are high or the tax money is not used. But Taxation is uh, from the days of Zacchaeus in the Bible. People don't want to pay tax. So it, it is a... And some of the reasons that I have said is that sometimes the people want to see uh, things being done from their money. Yeah. And so for you to make a case, you need holistic reforms. And is that, is that a tough pill for you? Yeah. First of all, the responsibility of National Revenue Authority is to collect money and transfer that money into the consolidated account. How the money is spent is not the responsibility of the National Revenue Authority. Now, it is important for citizens to know but that... The citizens yeah, care about that. Yes, it is important for the citizens to know that it is the citizen who is supposed to hold government accountable. That is why you have representation in the legislature for them to speak on their behalf. They are supposed to scrutinize the budget. They're supposed to direct the expenditure pattern of the government. So it is a sheer, it's a collective responsibility. It is not just a responsibility of Commissioner General, for that matter, National Revenue Authority. We will do our part as National Revenue Authority to make sure that the money is generated in a transparent manner and we account for the money. But there are others who also have a responsibility to make sure that the money is used for service delivery. So the citizen now that we are establishing National Revenue Authority and we'll be publishing the revenue we are collecting on a monthly basis, the citizens have a responsibility to hold government accountable. They have a responsibility to hold their representatives in this parliament accountable to make sure they do their work. So it is a collective responsibility. Can you fix South Sudan? We are already started fixing it. And for South Sudan to be fixed, you need local workforce and building their capacity. Are you doing that? Because some of the people who are talking about building their capacity will ensure that they adapt to the new change that is needed. As a matter of fact, recruitment process is starting this month. We are going to advertise certain position this month. So you can also watch the media. If you are interested, you can apply for a job. So we are starting recruitment this month. You are, you are starting recruitment. Yeah. And we are advertising position this month. If you are going to build the capacity of the locals, why bring in a tax lawyer from Britain? Now, this is, this is what is happening. The entire National Revenue Authority staff are going to be local staff. There will not be any international staff. What we are saying is that there are gaps. So we need to fill that gap. To, to fill that gap, we need support. So if we are questioning why are we, are we bringing a tax lawyer from outside, then you are also questioning why are we bringing a foreigner as a commissioner general. The question is why? Why? Because we have a gap. That aspect, that quality of this thing we have, we are not saying we don't have lawyers in South Sudan. But that experience, that quality, that aspect we have, we couldn't find it. That is why we have to bring an international. And mind you, this international that we brought is working alongside with some South Sudanese lawyers. So it's even a form of capacity building for them. Because when he left, we are going to use these people to do the work. So it is a transfer of skill and transfer of knowledge. 
So it's not like we are not going to hire South Sudanese. The entire National Revenue Authority staff, 100%, it is South Sudanese who are going to be there. But we are going to be bringing foreigners to support them, to train them to build their capacity. So that is how it is. If you don't have the technology, you import it. If you don't have that capacity level, you import it. So that at the end of the day, you train other people to train others. That is what we do. You cannot do it alone. One year is already almost over. And another year, what is the next thing for the national revenue? We program? have implementation strategy approved by the board with deadline. So we are working according to plan. This is what is important. We are working according to plan and we are moving stage by stage. National Re establishment of national revenue authority is a very complex issue. It is not something we are going to do in six months, in two months. We have 18 months deadline and we have 24 months deadline and we have three years deadline. So people should be watching us. After 18 months, ask questions. If nothing, you don't see serious things operationalized. What is the most important achievement that you want to leave behind? And your contract expires in three years. In, after three years, when I'm living here, you have a fully operationalized South Sudan National Revenue Authority, which is, can be compared to any other revenue authority in the South sub-region. And you have South Sudanese professionals that will train to take over. That is the legacy I'm going to leave in. Dr. Olympio Atipo, thanks for coming on Fixing South Sudan. Thank you very Have much. Have you fixed South Sudan? We are fixing South Sudan. Will you fix South Sudan? We are fixing South Sudan. Thank you, sir. <laughs>